Good morning, everybody, and thank you for tuning in. Today it is Sunday, November 21st at approximately 7 a.m. Uh, we're here in the yard. Today is going to be kind of a chore day. I figured I'd, uh, considering how good this new camera footage is, I'm pretty impressed with it, and the microphone capabilities and the uh, stabilization capabilities. I'm actually pretty impressed with that and uh, figure that you guys would love to see more content of just kind of behind the scenes stuff. Um, so that's what we're gonna do today. So um, we are here in the yard. Like I said, it's gonna be kind of a chore day today. Um, Sundays are not by any means busy um, at all. They're kind of just a good day to catch up and uh, get ready for the oncoming week. Um, now, that's not to say that calls don't come in, uh, but typically it's a pretty slow day. Night times can get a little busier, but during the day it's um, usually pretty slow. Everyone's kind of staying at home. We do have a little bit of a rush during like the time when uh, people start getting up for church and then people start going uh, or leaving church, you know, lockouts and jump starts, stuff like that. But. Uh, anyway, what we're gonna do is, like I said, get some chores done. So I got the rotator fired up. We got one of the cables on that truck that needs a little bit of attention. We're gonna pull it all the way out, re-spool it. We do have a rotator job tomorrow, so we're gonna go ahead and get that cable situated for that job. Um, let's see, what else do we have? We have a mini excavator that we need to go pick up from the local uh, rental yard down the street here and bring that over to our yard because that is going out tomorrow morning early. So um, we do have the ability to preload equipment um, over the weekend, so that's pretty nice. Uh, so we'll be able to do that. Um, what else do we got? I do have a, uh, a task that I need to wash that rotator. Um, we've been slowly going through the trucks, getting them all washed up. Um, we always keep our trucks pretty nice, but we did uh, have a recent rain. So we're just working our way through the trucks, getting them all cleaned up and uh, back to tip top shape. So that is something that I need to do is wash the rotator. Um, and then I do have a set of air cleaner lights that I purchased uh, that I need to install inside the air cleaners. Those are like those uh, amber lights that you see inside the air cleaners, just cool look. I've had them forever, actually almost over a year now. I just haven't had a chance to install them. So um that's on the list um and yeah we're just gonna kind of go through some trucks probably do some greasing get some grease down on the trucks uh, and just do anything we can to catch up so uh yeah i'm gonna go ahead and pull the rotator out we'll get it situated uh in probably our north south configuration here in the yard so that way we have as much room to pull out cable and uh we'll start working on that so thanks for tuning in tuning in guys and uh, hopefully you guys enjoy the little blog style kind of uh what we're gonna do today so thanks for tuning in we'll see you later as you guys saw in the last video i was talking about the new white trailer refurbished look at those rims <whistles> those came out just baller if you guys remember i mean these are steel rims so that's a bad comparison but they pretty much look like that this trailer hasn't been polished in uh 13 14 years so pretty nice uh after doing that we're gonna slowly start making our way through all the other trailers just start centering them in to get polished because it really wakes up the look of the trailer so these two trailers are gonna be sent in at some point to get nice and shiny so pretty excited about that but that trailer came out really nice jb trailer service in fontana did all the work uh paint and deck so and uh you know went through all the lighting and everything so highly recommend them thanks for doing the work guys appreciate all that i'll put their uh, link down in the description below so if you guys ever need any trailer service even like repair they do you know welds and all that stuff we actually have our spread axle up there getting uh, a few welds done because it's got some some old it's an old trailer so it's got some breaks in in the axle system where it kind of flexes a little more than it should so all right so what we're gonna do is uh, i'm gonna fold down the underlift here and uh i'm gonna get up there i believe it's just the left side so the white cable that needs attention um but i'll check i'm gonna start with the white because let's see i think i can check from right here uh yeah it looks like the white which is this side it's got kind of a uneven layering right there so i think we're gonna go ahead and address that so uh let's go ahead and boom it down and then we will Let's go ahead and free spool white. 
So yeah, we'll go ahead and pull white and I'm probably just gonna hook it up to the grade all here. Um, give us a good amount of weight and uh, we'll go ahead and start pulling cable out. So I'll probably have to wait for Roberto, he's on his way in. And uh, that way I don't pull too much out. cable out um, basically four times less cable we would have to pull out uh, and additionally we can load up the lines pretty good we can basically set the brakes on this unit and just kind of drag it pretty hard um, and it's just gonna run all the cable through multiple sheaves of snatch block and you know it'll kind of straighten out any little kinks that the line may have it's just a, a good practice in my opinion I guess cable end without the back of the truck. Right, so got me a snatch block here. And then we need one more. And do this one back here. So next we're gonna take our cable end and we're gonna pull some slack through. Let's go to this side though. Now we're going to run it through this snatch block. a four-part line so as you can see come off the boom head snatch block around the snatch block to that snatch block around that snatch block to this snatch block and that terminated so to count your parts of line you would stand on your load end and you'd count the falls of line from there so you have one two three four so that's four parts of line be careful, um, don't go too fast because it's four parts of line, so it, it's gonna come out really fast on the drum side. For every one feet of, uh, one feet you travel, it's gonna pull the winch four feet. Did you know that? All right, so this is what we're kind of dealing with here. You see, it's just not a really even wrap. Uh, actually, that one's gonna need some attention too, so. Hey, Manny. Can I get you over here for a quick second? I'm gonna have him lock the drum when, I'm gonna have him lock the free spool when I tell him so that way you don't have to stop. That speed right there. That speed's good. 
So for every one foot that he goes back, this line is gonna be pulled four feet because of the way the parts of line are and vice versa. For, to make him move one feet, we need to pull four feet of cable. That's why operation of a winch is extremely slow when you are four parted or more parts of line, the slower the, the line pull is. Okay, go ahead and lock it. Okay, I'm gonna need you guys' help with this because it's uh, it needed a full re-spool. All right, little status update. As you can see, that cable is much better now. And we got this one strung out to the last uh, full wrap. And uh, this one, we just went with a two part because there wasn't a lot of kinks or anything that we had to straighten out. So uh, Roberto's back there. Uh, and yeah, now I'm gonna start tightening up and we'll get this one straightened, straightened out and then we'll do the same to the drag wrench. So that's the progress update. All right, this one is the drag winch, and I just got this one on a three-part. So kind of the same concept applies here, except for every one feet Roberto goes back, the winch is gonna turn three feet. So, this depends on your parts of line. to the last full wrap and I'm probably gonna stop it. Ah, I gotta get down here and lock it up. Alright, so what I'm doing now is I'm powering out so that way I have full control over the winch and it doesn't over doesn't uh, like over pull it. I'm gonna power out until we get to that last problem spot. And then from there, I can have Roberto lock it up. Because when you free spool, if he stops on that end, the winch is going to continue to turn uh, with the, you know, the uh, momentum that the winch it has free spooling. And so it'll keep turning even though I told him to stop. And it'll bunch up and it'll cause the uh, winch to unspool itself under the cable wrap. Okay, so now we're past that problem spot. So I'm going to have him lock it up real tight. And then we're gonna go in. All right, we're gonna keep doing this and I'll uh, update you when we're done. All right, guys, we are getting there. Um, as you can see, this wrap on this drum is not as pretty as the, the uh, ones on the mains. And this just sends back to the same problem that uh, I'm sure a lot of you guys know that Ron Pratt has, um, which my winch sits probably a good four or five feet back further than his does, uh, but same problem. There's such a short throw from that uh, sheave right there to this winch that the left to right of the winch, it just doesn't allow it to, I guess, wrap very nicely. It does really good in the middle, but once you get out to the edges, it wants to pull inward. So um, definitely not as bad as Ron Pratt's setup, but um, it still is an issue. So uh, I feel your pain there, buddy. Okay, so we got the rotator all situated. Uh, I just got what's called a PPI. Uh, and a PPI stands for Private Party Impound. Uh, and basically I'm going to legally steal a car and by legally I mean the uh, a variety of cases happen in this particular case I guess the driver got arrested um, so the vehicle has been sitting there for an extended period of time and the property owner which in this case is the local casino uh, does not want the vehicle there anymore so uh, they con they contract us we have our signs posted um, at this facility uh, that if any vehicles are left for extended period of time or they're illegally parked then uh, the casino does have the right to call a tow company to tow them out so uh, that is what we're going to be doing right now um, just to preface and clarify uh, we do not there's a lot of tow companies that go around and patrol lots um, 
like apartment complex and stuff like that and just patrol them and try to find a car that is parked in a red zone or something like that. We do not do that by any means. Uh, one that is illegal in the state of California. Uh, but plenty of companies still do it, unfortunately. Um, and so anytime that we remove a vehicle, we have to have someone, well, one, our signs have to be posted, and two, um, we have to have someone, whether it be security or in this case, like the tribal police, um, they call us and they have to be there at the, basically supervising the whole process and legally sign for the removal of the vehicle. And then once they do that and it gets back to our yard, we call the law, uh, the law, law enforcement agency, I guess, that would govern whatever area we take the vehicle from. And we report what's called the private party impound to them. So that way it's in their system that the vehicle is not stolen and that it was legally removed for whatever reason we removed it. And per, you know, in this case, the tribal police. So we, you know, all that information is disclosed with the police department. So that way when, uh, you know, Joe Schmo calls and says, hey, my you know my vehicle is stolen. They can pull it up on their records and see, oh no, you actually illegally parked or whatever. So that's what we're doing. Probably not gonna get much footage of uh, hooking up or anything because um, we're just gonna get it out of there and then uh, I'll probably just get a few shots once we get back to the yard. So that's what we're doing now. So let's uh, go ahead and legally steal a car. All right, so something you guys might not have known is that uh, for us to get inside of a parking garage, we actually have to uh, fold down our underlips so as you guys can see uh, I'm gonna unfold using a remote here and uh, I'm unfolding and then I can boom down about right there is fine that way that boom tip or the I guess the underlip tip isn't sticking up and out uh, so I guess this is on the second floor so we're gonna go ahead and dive into here and see what's going on so as you guys can see, it got a lot tighter in here. That's our clearance. The light bar is actually on a folding mechanism. In with this particular uh, parking structure, we don't need to fold down the light bar, but uh, there are a few that the light bar does have to get folded down to give us just that extra clearance. But this one's, uh, I think, like an eight foot clearance. Just fine. All right, so looks like my car is over here. I'm gonna go ahead and snatch it up really quick, and I'll get back with you here in a bit. All right, guys, uh, I actually have keys for this one, which is bizarre, but I believe it's because the tribal police actually arrested this guy. Um, so they confiscated the keys and impounded the vehicle. So um, I will be able to record most of this. So that's nice. Um, so what I'm gonna do is just kind of set the camera up here and I'm gonna go to work. So now that we got the vehicle up in the air, uh, since this is a front wheel drive car, I can just suck it in even though it is in park. But, but since the drive wheels are off the ground, which is the front wheels, uh, I'm able to just drag it straight in. Go ahead and boom up a little bit, put a little tilt into it. Got plenty of clearance from the oil pan here, which as you guys can see. Uh, and yeah, we'll just put two straps on it and we'll be on our way. Actually gonna take a little bit of tilt out of it and a little more boom up okay that's a wrap not too worried about safety chains on this one we're literally like a mile from the yard so I'm just gonna get it back to the yard so biggest things with um, PPIs is pictures 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 the biggest thing with any call is pictures nowadays because everyone wants to blame me for something so this vehicle had some miscellaneous scratches and dents and um, a painted rear bumper, uh, some other little things that I documented. I probably took 25 pictures all together and documented that in the call. So that way it's all tied with the call. So when the customer comes to pick it up, um, if there's any discrepancy, they say we damaged something, it's all there. 
that's really big because you know the, the customer is not present in this case of when the, when they're picking up the vehicle so or when uh, when i'm picking up the vehicle so very important and you know they're already mad because their car was towed for whatever reason so as a tow company it's very easy to get blamed unfortunately the biggest thing when you're towing a car on a wheel lift is uh just being aware of dips and undulations on the road um, because you could puncture the oil pan or you could take a bumper out or something like that if you're not careful so basically right now i'm just watching closely the back of the car since it's up in the air and then now when we go down the hill i'm going to watch the front of the car just make sure it doesn't bottom out and then right here we're coming to a dip so i'm going to just watch and make sure that the car doesn't bottom out again close but not a factor and yeah we're in tow pretty smooth sailing from here like i said a mile down the road here we'll be back to our yard so uh i'm gonna take this back to the yard and we'll get back with you when we get this car dropped all right so this is the machine that we're preloading for monday uh, i got two buckets got the little golf cart here so i think we're just gonna lift it into there so i don't have to walk this machine back to uh, our place uh, with a bucket hanging. Going with that one hand gang right now. Okay, raise our blade here. bath time so i got the truck all situated up on outriggers boom 45 degrees off gives us a good little working area to get the boom and the head all cleaned up uh and yeah we'll get to work here get this thing all washed up probably do a quick little wheel polish get it all back in tip-top shape so let's get to work all righty but everybody she is nice and clean honestly not as good as i'd hoped uh we only had two guys me and roberto washing it this truck is a beast to wash need like four to five guys to really effectively wash it and make sure there's no dry spots so um there's a few little spots but we'll get them with some spray spray wax and whatnot and we'll, we'll clean them up but for the most part it looks really good going down the road uh so i'm gonna go ahead and put her back in her bay and we'll see what the rest of the day has for us it's starting to come to an end here so uh we'll see what's going on so i'm gonna go and back her up So we got Wallace in there. I'm showing him how to load this up. I'm just kind of letting him, I gave him a crash course and gave him a crash course and showed him kind of the basics and let him play around with it. That's kind of my philosophy is, you know, I'm supervising madness, I say. And I just, I give him the basics and kind of let him play around with it. Now, obviously I'm not gonna do that with someone who knows nothing, but um, you know, just, that's the best way to learn, right? So we'll see what he does here. So remember, we're gonna, the blade needs to be facing this way. Once I get to the bottom of the... Uh, so, so you need to spin it 180 degrees around so that the blade's facing this way. Oh. Yep. So just do a nice gradual turn. And then you can always go backwards too. There you go. So now that track's not even, there you go. Perfect. Just like that. See how it's nice and gradual? There you go. Perfect. All right, so now you can spin around and... So now we spin this one. Yep, so now you can... Oh, your other one. So your uh, your left hand, go ahead and your left hand's gonna be your uh, your rotate. Now just careful with uh, how close you get because you don't want to puncture the uh, hydraulic line. So that's fine there. But now you go left and right. 
with this joystick, and that's gonna be your swing. There you go. Yeah, so you can offset yourself a little bit so you have really good visibility. And now we're just gonna track up. So now just remember that you're going backwards now, so now it's gonna be a little weird. But I always say, I, I like to load it backwards, so that way when I'm offloading, it's forward. If that makes sense. Go this way a little bit Wallace just a little other way other way there you go a little more there you go now pretty much straight up from there perfect so what you want to do is try to keep the tracks moving together like I said because you can if you go left and right it's just gonna create problems for you so now just kind of look at here and just kind of maintain a visual reference between this and this and you know how to find straight now start watching up here at your light bar because you're gonna get start getting close so you can take this uh, dial right here and just uh, slowly go in one direction so go the other way oh whoa, whoa. <laughs> okay hang on all right let's go that's where we're like right on the outside that's fine even better so even better yet though i like to do this dial right here and see how that offsets it so what that's doing is it's keeping the weight of your counterweight still centered, but it's moving your boom over so you're not gonna hit the light bar. Okay. All right. So basically we're gonna keep going probably another five, six feet here. The so same thing kind of goes straight. Yep. You can just kind of compare here. We'll probably go that way a bit. Yep, there you go. Huh? Yeah, he's all right though. There you go, perfect. All right, that is good there. Okay, so now just, I guess, think about it because, you know, one wrong move can. You want to go slow? Slow, and you want. What do you think? What do you want to think? Yeah. A couple more tries than that, I have it down. Yeah, that's pretty good. All right, everyone. That is a wrap. Uh, pretty good day, I think. So, yeah, we got a bunch of things done that needed to be done that probably won't get done during the week because we are just like balls to the wall during the week. So, uh, yeah, I felt good about that day. So, uh, yeah, with that being said, hopefully you guys did enjoy the video. As always, like, comment, subscribe. Thank you for watching. Let me know in the comments what you thought about the video. We will see you on the next one. Thanks for watching, guys. Yeah.